And welcome back to the Big Doctor Who Poll! I am Joshua Snares, and today we'll be counting down the stories you love and love to hate. The results of this countdown is sourced by you, the audience, and it is not too late to cast your vote for future episodes, and you can find the link in the description below. Today, we'll be starting off with my favourite Doctor, the first Doctor, played by William Hartnell. On the planet Vortus, a force known as the Animus is luring the TARDIS to it. As a child, Bill Stratton, the writer, was bitten by a bull ant when he interrupted two bull ants fighting, and remembered the experience when he saw his two sons fighting like them. He thought that having the Doctor face off gigantic ants would be quite terrifying, and that's how he came up with the story. The TARDIS lands in 17th century Cornwall, where the TARDIS team find themselves in the middle of a pirate plot. During the production of The Smugglers, Innes Lloyd convinced William Hartnell to step down from the role of the Doctor, and Patrick Troughton was approached to be his replacement. The disgusting reels versus the beautiful Dravens. I wonder who is the good guy and who is the bad guy. John Wiles, the producer, went to the BBC copyright department and asked about the rights to the Dravens because he considered using them again, which never happened. The TARDIS lands on a spaceship where they discover a crew who is seemingly being attacked telepathically by creatures known only as the Sensorites. With the show being constantly filmed in tiny inadequate studios, Sidney Newman threatened the head of drama that he would rather cancel Doctor Who than continue filming in these facilities. The risk paid off and the production was moved to Riverside Studio One. The travellers find themselves surrounded by giant objects and encounter gigantic people, but not everything is as it seems. This serial's concept, the TARDIS team shrunk to miniature, was the original concept for the first serial. But due to production limitations and Sidney Newman, head of drama, disapproving of the concept, it was held off. The Doctor and friends visit the Space Museum and discover that no one can hear them or see them. Michael Craze, who played companion Ben Jackson, was the brother of Peter Craze, who played Daco in the serial. The Elders are draining the life force from the people known only as the Savages. This was Peter Purvis's final regular appearance as Stephen Taylor, and was content with leaving due to the lack of character development in recent stories. Yeah! The Doctor and his friends land in Tombstone in the year 1881, where they encounter the infamous Doc Holliday and sing a song or two. Patrick Troughton was suggested to play Johnny Ringo until he was found to be unavailable. The TARDIS travelers are stuck in another dimension, which is home to the Celestial Toymaker. The Trilogic game prop was a center point of the story, and after production wrapped, Peter Purvis took it home. He soon found it difficult to find work and thought of the prop as being the source of his misfortune, so he threw it out. The next day, he was offered a job on Zed Cars. Dodo accidentally almost wipes out an entire civilization because of her runny nose. Monica, the Indian elephant that featured in the episode, had to spend the night before filming in a van outside of the director's house due to the driver not being allowed to park at Ealing where the story was being filmed. The TARDIS lands in Paris, 1794, in the height of the French Revolution. During the rehearsals of episode three, A Change of Identity, the director, Henrik Hirsch, was struggling with the workload and endless arguments with William Hartnell that when he left rehearsals early, he was found collapsed outside. John Gorry, director of The Keys of Marinus, took over for the remainder of the serial. Stephen, Vicky and the Doctor land in ancient Troy and get tied up in the Trojan horse plot. Due to an alleged miscommunication between Maureen O'Brien and the producer, she was rode out of the program at the end of the serial. William Hartnell was not impressed and Maureen was shocked, but not entirely unhappy due to the lack of character development in recent stories. The TARDIS lands in 12th century Jaffa during the Crusade. Nicholas Courtney was originally considered for the role of King Richard, who would later play the Brigadier. Adrian Hill, who would later play Katarina, was considered for the role of Joanna. 
After being locked out of the TARDIS on the planet Marinus, the TARDIS team must find the lost keys in return for access to their ship. In the original draft, Barbara comments that the scanner is not in colour. The Doctor replies saying, I was working on that on your planet. You remember the first time we met? I went along to the British Broadcasting Corporation, but they were infernally secretive. Susan replied, Was that the day you came back in such a bad temper, Grandfather? I never lose my temper! The TARDIS is malfunctioning, and the TARDIS team begin to turn on one another. After the first four episodes of An Unearthly Child were produced, the BBC chief of programs wanted to cancel Doctor Who due to going over budget, but he was convinced to allow the team to make 13 individual episodes. Since An Unearthly Child was four episodes and The Daleks was seven episodes, that left room for only a two-part serial. Therefore, this script was commissioned. Space security agent Mark Corey is investigating Dalek sources appearing over the planet Kemble. Terry Nation, writer of the Daleks, wanted to pitch a Dalek spin-off and use this episode as a way of laying groundwork for the future program whilst also setting up the Daleks master plan. The TARDIS team meet a new friend in Vicky and discover she is being taunted by the dreaded Coquillion. Names suggested for Vicky were Millie, Valerie and Tanny. When Barbara shoots Sandy, the sand monster, the charge went off too early, startling Jacqueline Hill. Thankfully, she was alright. The Doctor and Stephen land in Paris in 1572, where Stephen encounters a man who looks exactly like the Doctor, but he can't be. In the original script, actor William Russell and Jacqueline Hill would reprise their roles of Ian and Barbara in the closing moments, watching the TARDIS see materialise. This sadly didn't come to pass. The Daleks chase the Doctor and friends throughout time to exterminate them once and for all. Companion Stephen Taylor, played by Peter Purvis, was originally called Roger Bruck, which later became Michael Taylor and finally Stephen Taylor. This serial marked the first time we ever saw the Doctor and Susan and their travelling companions Barbara and Ian. In the original concept for the series, the exterior of the TARDIS before being chosen to be a police box was completely invisible, with the exterior being painted with light resistant paint. It was later suggested that it should look like a police box by Anthony Coburn. The TARDIS team decide to take a holiday and they go to ancient Rome, but the relaxation doesn't last long. The serial was the first attempt at making a comedy historical and was to be a parody loosely inspired by the film Quo Vadis. The TARDIS is captured by Marco Polo and the Doctor and friends are forced to join his caravan across China in 1289. The story features narration by Marco throughout the serial as diary entries. Originally, it was to be the Doctor, Barbara and Ian who would provide this narration. A futuristic computer known as Votan requires Doctor Who and wishes to make all intelligent life on Earth artificial. Ennis Lloyd and Jerry Davis wanted to make Doctor Who more hip and relatable, so they added two new regulars to the program. These two characters were Ben and Polly, played by Michael Craze and Annika Wills, who were more in tone with the swinging 60s. In the Daleks, we meet, well, the Daleks. The design of the Daleks that we know and love today nearly never happened. Originally, Ridley Scott was slated to be the designer for this serial. He later went on to be famous for directing Alien, Blade Runner and many other films. Cybernetic invaders from a world almost identical to ours land in Antarctica 1986 and a change that shows that Doctor Who is far from being all over. William Hartnell became sick with bronchitis and couldn't appear in episode 3. Minor script changes were made to make Ben and Barclay take most of his lines. Barbara is mistaken to be the high priest, Yataxa, reincarnated. When the team moved from the tiny Studio G to TC3 at Television Centre, the scenery for the temple had been broken up by accident. The designer, Barry Newbury, put together a new set, using what was surviving, to create a new area of the Garden of Peace. The Doctor encounters a mysterious monk who turns out to be someone quite familiar. Allegedly, 
William Hartner was so upset with the multitude of changes, he would throw fake tantrums during rehearsals to annoy producer John Wiles and script editor Donald Tosh. The TARDIS lands in the 22nd century and they discover the Daleks have taken over and the Doctor is unsure if he can stop them. During location filming, designer Spencer Chapman put Dalek markings on various monuments, which the police were not exactly happy about. Luckily, no one was in trouble. The Daleks intend on conquering the solar system and plan to use a weapon that can destroy time to do so. Arguments between William Hartnell and producer John Wiles reached a point where the crew had a brief strike. It even reached the Manchester Evening News that Hartnell would leave the show, which did not come to pass. Don't forget to enter the poll below to add your vote to this series. Don't forget to subscribe to the official Josh Nairs YouTube channel.